chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1. And we are going to begin reading. We actually are going to have a few verses this morning that we are going to look at. Praying this week. Not really knowing how the Spirit was going to lead and what message he had for the church. Isn't it nice to be led by the Spirit when it comes to delivering the Word and not have to try to work on a message? You know, if you work on a message, it's not going to have the likelihood of ministering as well as when you let the Holy Spirit give you a message. You know why? Because he knows the hearts, he knows the needs. Some messages apply. Some messages don't apply. I'm sure you can glean something in a message that you can apply. But sometimes there are certain messages that God wants spoken. And you may walk out thinking, well, that wasn't exactly for me this morning. And sometimes there are messages that aren't. Like the saying goes, if the shoe fits, wear it. If the shoe doesn't fit, toss it out. But pray for those whom the shoe fits. Because there may be people the shoe fits. And you want to pray that the word gets planted and richly dwells within the heart of those in which the shoe fits. So 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13 this morning, reads, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, and be sober. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The message this morning is on being sober. Now this is not a message on alcoholism, drunk driving, drinking too much, having a too high of an alcohol content. This is talking about sobriety of the mind, being sober in the mind. Sin is intoxicating. The flesh is intoxicating. Giving place to sin, giving place to the flesh will intoxicate you. It hurts the mind. It hurts the spirit. It hurts the soul. It can at times hurt the body. Sin will cause sickness. Sin will cause disease. Sin. So, so Peter is, is making it clear to be of a sober mind. What is a sober mind? A mind that doesn't contend with the flesh. When you are of a sober mind, you have the ability through the Spirit of God that is within you to be able to discern between that which is right and that which is wrong. You've got the ability to be able to discern between righteousness and unrighteousness. And it's the same thing with sin. Sin should make us uncomfortable. What happens if you drink too much alcohol? It can cause death. You can kill not only yourself, you can kill somebody else. But you see, it goes to show the spirit that's in the Bible. Now my message this morning isn't on alcohol. I'm using alcohol to set my foundation. When a person drinks, when a person drinks too much, they become impaired. And when a person becomes impaired, they are no longer sober. So now let's relate this to sin. When we walk in the flesh, we are no longer sober. When we walk in sin, we become impaired. And that's exactly what Peter, and we'll be going through other scripture verses, Paul is saying, 
saying, and going back to Peter, 1 Peter 1.13, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. But what Peter is saying is, gird up the loins of your mind and don't give place to the flesh. And don't give place to sin. Peter's telling us to gird up the loins of your mind because all sin begins in the mind. All sin. What you look at begins in the mind. What you do begins in the mind. What you say to somebody begins in the mind. Where you go, how you act, it all begins in the mind. Because it takes the brain in order to do what you do. The brain has to send a signal to the eyes. The brain has to send a signal to the ears. The brain has to send a signal for what you do and where you go. So all sin begins in the mind. So Peter is saying, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Turn over to chapter 4. Same book. We're going to look at verse 7. He repeats himself. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. Skip over to chapter 5. Verse 8. He speaks again. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. How does he devour? He devours with sin. He uses the flesh. And, and, and so many of us have some been delivered. Some are in the process of deliverance. So many are so consumed by the works of the flesh because they haven't spent enough time with Jesus to learn his personality to be able to recognize sin or to be able to recognize the flesh. So spiritually, they are poisoned. The Bible says be drunk in the spirit, not be drunk in in the world, whether it be the Bible or whether it be the, act, the, the works of the flesh. All sin begins in our mind. And, and sin is a choice that we make. You choose to sin. We're born into sin. We choose to sin. And Joshua says in chapter 24, verse 15, you don't have to turn to it, write it down, read it later. As for me, choose you this day. Choose. He's telling you to make a choice. Don't you hate it when people say, God hasn't delivered me yet? I'm engaging in the sin that I'm engaging in because God hasn't delivered me yet. He delivered you at the cross. He took care of sin at the cross. He paid the price for sin at the cross. He paid the price for your sickness, disease, at the cross so that we can have life. And we can have life more abundantly. So we can be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Watch. Peter put a lot of stress on being sober. Why did he put so much stress on being sober? Because he understood that people's minds are taken over by the works of the flesh. Turn with me. Romans chapter 8. Paul was having the same issue. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter 8. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. That's not being sober. Being incontinent. Right? There is also spiritual incontinency. Meaning you lose control of the mind. You lose control.
control of the spirit. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Are you going to serve the flesh and walk after the flesh and make the flesh your God? Or are you going to serve the spirit and walk after the spirit? Choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua said, because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will be sober. We are not going to be incontinent. We are not going to be spiritually incontinent. As for me and my household, we are going to serve the Lord. Going back to Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They are, they are not sober-minded people. They are incontinent. They have no control. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, they that walk after the Spirit have a sober mind. A sober mind, a mind that doesn't contend with sin, a mind that doesn't contend with the flesh. Because to be carnally minded, to be sinfully minded, to be fleshly minded is death. But to be spiritually minded, to have a sober mind, to have a mind that has control, muscle control, spiritual muscle control, is going to give you life and peace. Because the carnal mind, the mind that is incontinent, the mind that is not sober, is enmity. It's an enemy of God. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But he's saying, but you're not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, if it be that the Spirit of God dwelleth within you. But if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his because he is not sober. He is incontinent. He's loose. He has no control all over the mind. And if Christ be in you, the body's dead because of sin. And the spirit of life is alive in you because of righteousness. Turn with me over to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. It's so, so descriptive in telling us what types of things we are supposed to keep our mind upon. You want a sober mind? You want a spiritually sober mind? You want to flee from the flesh? You not want to get caught up in the flesh and caught up in, in sin? Well, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, Paul describes this so beautifully. Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true. True. Not false. True. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true. Honest, truth, honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, pure. The pure in heart shall see God. On the Sermon on the Mount, you have to have a pure heart if you want to see God. So whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report. And here comes that word. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think. Where does thinking begin? Thinking begins in the mind. Think on what? These things. These things. So, why is it? Why is it so many today get caught up in so much flesh? Why is it so many get caught up in so much sin not knowing, not spending the time with Jesus to know his personality. We have to spend time with him if we're going to get to know him. Let's turn over to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. You need to know these, not just have them 
told to you or, or, or just um, listened to them preach, you need to go home and you need to look up what every single one of these words are referring to. We're not going to go through them all here and now that's your homework. That should happen during your prayer and study time. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, and beings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. And such like. It's not saying that's it. And such like, meaning there's a whole lot more. A whole lot more to the works of the flesh. A whole lot more to sin. Of the such like, which I tell you before, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's what Paul and Peter are, are, are teaching and preaching here. To have a sober mind. To not walk after the flesh. Walk after the spirit. Gird up the loins of your mind. What is it? To gird them up. To strengthen them. How do you strengthen it? Get keeping in the word. Staying in the word. Fellowship with Jesus. Closing Galatians chapter 5. When you live. That kind of a lifestyle that in all you say and in all that you do, you're not walking after the flesh, but you're walking after the spirit, hungering for righteousness, hungering for holiness, not looking to walk the fence, not looking to walk on the line and keep one foot in the world and one foot in spiritual things. People, let me tell you, the church isn't going to save you on judgment day. Doesn't matter how many times you warned the church pew, how many times you sat in the church building. Turn it on Christian television isn't going to save you. Turn it on Christian music in your car isn't going to save you. Those are all forms of godliness. Because you can do all of those things and deny the power thereof. What's going to save you is the power within us that brings the change. Then the word says, then, then, then good works will follow those who believe. Good works will follow. Then that is the person who will be turning on Christian television. They will want no different. They will want nothing else. They will want their home filled with the Spirit of God. Those will be the people that will turn on Christian music. Because they're filled with the Spirit of God and they don't have time to feed the flesh. Feeding the Spirit. Because the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5 is love. Love the Lord your God with your heart, soul, mind, and body. Put it first. Joy. The Word says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Peace. Long-suffering. We had a testimony this morning of somebody who spiritually suffered long. Gentleness, goodness, faith. Faith. Meekness. Temperance. Against such, there is no law. And isn't it amazing? After reading the, the fruits, Paul goes on to write, And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. They want a sober mind. They don't want to be spiritually incontinent. And in verse 25, therefore, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. It's so good to walk in the steps of the Savior, stepping in the light. Amen. Ushers come at this time as we partake in the emblems. Time for refreshing, spiritual renewing as we partake of the young ones this morning. You know, the word says that we are not to partake unworthily. Go ahead, brethren, pass it out.
We are not to partake unworthily. So this is the time you're dealing with sin, if you're dealing with the flesh in your life, the time to repent of your sins. Pray the Holy Spirit brings the power into your life.